the window. They shall not pass. I'm sorry, I'm late. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. What are you doing? I came for a job. This is Brentwood Limousine Limited. I know, I'm going to be a driver. Madam, if you continue masturbating my driver, you are going to be a murderer. All right, guys, this is Devlin's Domain, and today I've got a release from Vinegar Syndrome. A very odd release, really. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome usually sticks to, like, you know, porn films, like vintage porn, uh, sex exploitation, exploitation, you know, black exploitation, uh, and horror films. Uh, and this is uh, actually, like, just like a lighthearted comedy. Uh, it's one I haven't seen before, but this is uh, My Chauffeur. 1985, starring Deborah Foreman and Sam Jones, featuring Penn and Teller. Uh, maybe they go to Vegas or something. <laughs> but uh, she's apparently a dishwasher at a restaurant and gets a job opportunity driving for a limo service, which is uh, dominantly all male staff. So she's like the only female there, and that's, I guess supposed to like tackle like uh, sexism in the workplace and uh, class, you know differences and stuff like that uh very 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 odd uh release from vinegar syndrome out I, I really wasn't enthused about getting this but it has like you know it's a limited slip cover so it's like hard to resist that uh and it's one of those things you know it's since it's limited it kind of holds some value so if i don't like it i can always get rid of it probably get most of my money back on it uh and yeah, just I might actually like it. So I'm going to give it a shot and see what's up. If I don't like it, I'll get rid of it. Uh, so we got a newly scanned and restored uh, from the negatives. Uh, licensed to drive interview with Deborah Foreman. Commentary track. Two commentary tracks. Isolated soundtrack. Uh, the theatrical trailer. TV spots. Still gallery. And uh, you got a reversible artwork on the inside cover here. So let's open it up, check it out. All right, there's the uh, front of the slip cover. I don't know if you can tell. Well, you can tell a little bit, right? There's like a gloss around the lips. You can really highlight the lipstick on her. Uh, pretty nice slip cover, I suppose. I'm really not like a comedy person. I'm very selective about the comedies I watch. Uh, mostly get into like the darker comedies, but this is light heart, whatever. Yeah, it's called a cult comedy. I don't know. I've never heard much about it. I saw a few people who were excited about it. So, we'll give it a shot. Looks like they're about the same artwork. Color even looks the same. different art. It's probably the same art that's on the other side of the slip. Yep. That's the original artwork there. Kind of like that one better actually. I like the new one better. But uh, for those traditionalists, you know, this looks very like, 80s vintage cover. So a lot of people might prefer that one. But either way, I'm going to pop it in. Let you know that you guys know how it is. Alright, well, let me just say that I fucking hate romantic comedies. And having said that, I actually like this a lot more than I thought I would. Uh, kind of surprised, actually. Uh, but that's, that is what this is, essentially, is a romantic comedy. Uh, I can kind of see why it would be dropped into the cult category. Uh... There's some shit in this that happens that's kind of, you don't normally see, like, in a normal romantic comedy. Well, I don't know. I, I haven't watched enough to really make that statement 100%. <laughs> but the ones I've seen, this is kind of, like, uh, a little different. 
Uh, so you have Casey Meadows. She's the the main character, uh, played by Deborah Foreman. She gets a letter from a rich man who owns this limo service and gives her a job as a limousine driver. I guess it's supposedly a well-paying job. And uh, uh, immediately she's kind of like uh, ostracized, I guess. Like it's an all-men type of thing. You know, it's a bunch of old guys, you know, proper gents. And she's kind of like this uh, very independent, uh, free spirit, you know, real quirky and uh, energetic and uh goofy you know she's she's kind of goofy like uh you can tell she's got like some comedic charm to her and uh you know she doesn't really mesh well with the other guys and and they you know they're kind of resistant to let her in and treat they definitely treat her a lot different so it's like her first job they give her is you know the worst job you can get is like having to drive around this rock star uh and then cat fight and uh, as soon as she gets to his hotel to come up, he's just got all these naked broads all over their bed with him. You know, he's just been out all night partying, and uh, he's trying to get her naked to get in the bed with him. And she's like, "No, fuck you. Let's get in the car." And uh, you know, she kind of uses her uh, wits to, you know, he's giving her a hard time, and she's able to get him to the show on time. And uh, it's this band called the Wigs that does a lot of the songs in the soundtrack, and they. Or the band on stage uh, playing for this for this guy catfight, but they they call it the band catfight. Uh, so I wasn't really crazy about the music, but you know, it, it, like he kind of had like this whole Johnny Rotten vibe to him, like kind of a real punk rock type of thing. And then the music doesn't really reflect that at all, like his the way he looks and everything. But uh, you know, they they she gets a rave review. From the man, from the tour manager for getting them to the show on time and and all this and you know they're about to fire her <laughs> from the limo company and and then they end up keeping her on just because you know you know it they give her all kind of money and they renew their contract with the company for however long and uh, so they really don't have any choice but to keep her on board uh, even though they want to get rid of her. And, you know, she has some other interactions with different people she picks up. And uh, eventually she picks up uh, this rich guy and his girlfriend. And, like, while driving, you know, there's a conversation in the back where the girl admits that she's pregnant, but the kid's not his, and she's leaving him for another guy. And and so she gets out of the car, and, and uh, uh, Casey's, like, stuck with this dude in the back seat. It's like having an emotional breakdown from being dumped. And... Uh, you know, she drops him, takes him to a park and, like, offers him booze to kind of help the situation. But he kind of takes it too far, just chugs the whole bottle. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, he's, like, streaking through the park. Like, he this is a like, naked man running through the park and he steals a, someone's baby carriage. <laughs> and he's, like, running through the park naked with a baby carriage. So that was pretty funny. Uh, and, uh, you know, they... She's trying to like get him back together before the cops come, and uh, she en she ends up having to take her to her place. Like uh, she's got like a servant quarters in the for the limousine company, and uh, yeah, she takes him there because she doesn't know where he lives and doesn't know who he is. He has no ID on him or anything, and so he kind of like wakes up and he's a totally different person. You know, they're, they're like in the bed together, and he's he's a uh, kind of like I don't want to like waking up in servants quarters and he's, he's really treating her like shit and she's kind of like throwing it back you know because they were getting along just well the night before uh and she's trying to figure out who this guy is and it turns out he's the son of the owner who sent her the letter to, to come work there and uh they end up on a, like a 300 mile trip somewhere they it gets set up and they have to like put up with each other you know they're already at each other's throats and yeah they have to they have to get along for this like 300 mile trip to wherever he's got to go uh but that's you know the basic setup for the story is you know in the in the romance that happens there and uh it's kind of funny like towards the end when you find out you know why she got the letter from this guy and what the connection is there it's pretty hilarious and i wish but there's like another swerve, and I kind of like, 
I, I can't tell you everything, but I, it ends. It starts to go one way, and I'm just like, yes, that's awesome. But their reaction isn't uh, sufficient to what the you know, to what they thought was going on, and and then you know there's another swerve after that. It kind of clears it clears it up a little bit, but. Uh, it's, you know, it's like one of those happy ending romantic comedies that, you know, it's not really my thing, uh, but I did enjoy this film, and it was it had some funny stuff in it. Uh, Penn and Teller in it. Uh, they, man, they're so young. Penn's like this little con man, and Teller's like some, he's like wearing like, you know, the Arabian get-up. He's like some kind of oil tycoon, tycoon or something, and they, they get into all kinds of shenanigans. They end up in a limo with a bunch of naked girls, and... All kind of stuff. Like, man, they look young. <laughs> it's crazy. I've never seen them that young before. Uh, as far as special features go, uh, there's two commentaries I didn't listen to. I did watch the uh, TV spots and trailers and stuff, and uh, wow, they did a great job restoring because you know they used the old reel for the for the trailers and stuff, and it just looks so shitty compared to how it looks now on on the restored Blu-ray. Uh, the 2K scan. Uh, so, yeah, it's just crazy to me how, how they make these things look so much better. Uh, I watched the interview with the actress Deborah Foreman, and uh, I, did, I, I didn't realize what other movie she was in. She was in April Fool's Day. Uh, I think she had different color hair. That's why I didn't notice her. But, uh, you know, she's, she's a pretty girl She uh, in this film. She, she kind of reminds me of, like, Sharon Stone mixed with a chipmunk. Or something, but you know she's cute. Uh, she looks a little different nowadays you know, in the interview. Hair straighter, kind of a little older. You know, I think she's like in her fifties, maybe early sixty. But uh, yeah, she, she's still not bad looking. She just looks a lot different uh, than she did here. She was pretty young. Uh, but yeah, it was a pretty interesting interview. Just talked about how she got into in the acting and you know different films she's worked on. But uh. Yeah, it's worth checking out. It's kind of skimpy. I mean, it looks like a long list of special features, but it's really not that many. Once when, when you, you know, take once you take out what you're actually going to watch at all these, and <laughs> you really only have one. That's the interview. Uh, uh, maybe if I decide to go back and watch this, I might go and try one of these commentary tracks. Uh, don't know which one I'd want to go with, but uh, probably the director. Uh, writer director David Baird I'll probably go with that one but anyways yep so there's this slip covers are limited to 1500 so I'll put the link in the description for the vinegar syndrome slip cover listing and uh, you can find this at Diabolic DVD as well uh, you'll probably get it on Amazon without the slip cover uh, actually I don't I'm not sure if they sell these without slip covers yet I'll have to look into that but anyway I'll put a link to get this somewhere and uh if you like the video, if it helped you out, hit that like button, hit subscribe if you want to see more, and uh, feel free to look around the channel and find something else you might be interested in. i got plenty more coming, so see you guys later.